I'm sure most of you out there are familiar with Undertale. Even if you haven't touched the game, you have definitely heard the music, seen the memes, and maybe even read the fanfiction. Don't pretend like you fellas didn't, it's really good. I mean, what? That shows you how much of a grip the fanbase has on popular culture, even over 9 years after Undertale originally released. And that's because Undertale is a freaking good game. Almost all the reviews are 10 out of 10s, and for the most part, I don't have any objections to that. Undertale might be one of the most impressive games I have ever played. But while the Undertale fanbase may be a fascinating place to be, it has recently devolved into pointless negativity, especially on Reddit. Of course it's on Reddit. When you're dealing with a fanbase, there are probably loads of fans that can have healthy discussions on the games. But sometimes these communities are so outwardly bad that they just make the video game seem like an afterthought. What happens when the Undertale fanbase turns political? That statement is 10 times more worrying out loud. Good evening, I'm Bagubuns, and this is a video I never wanted to make. And hopefully I don't have to talk about Undertale in general ever again. Y'all fellas scare me. I've been a pretty big fan of Undertale since 2016. This Kickstarter game, made mostly by Toby Fox, has some of the most iconic characters, music, and gameplay of any game out there. And yeah, Undertale deserves every bit of the success that it has. But even though at one point I consider Undertale my favorite game of all time, I have never considered myself a part of the Undertale fanbase. Cause I knew they were trouble when they walked in. So shame on me now. Flew the game to places I've never been and never wished to be. I mean, from the time this game was only a few months old, we saw the Undertale fans harassing MatPat over a game theory he did as a joke, and for handing the Pope a copy of the game. I don't even know why that was so controversial. I think it was meant to be more symbolic than functional, but people found it extremely disrespectful. I mean, I don't think the Pope's a gamer, but if Undertale made him one, I see this as an absolute win. Even though these have gone down as memes, it wasn't a joke back then. They were dead serious, and still are, about how the game is represented online. Believe it or not, bullying a grown man nearly to tears was probably the nicest thing they've done. And it would be pathetic if it were any fanbase that does this, but I think it's extra pathetic that it is the Undertale fanbase. Let me show you why. Of course, if you fellas happen to be a functional member of society, then subscribe to the channel. Those are the only types of people allowed here. To understand why the Undertale fanbase is the way it is, you sort of have to understand the video game and its main message. Some would argue that the core message of the game is determination because of how key it is to the identity of the game. Every time you save, determination! Every time you die, determination! Stacking wieners on your head, determination! But I think even more significant than that is the theme of loving your enemies. Undertale is a subversion of the RPG genre. Instead of boring your turn, my turn battles, you engage in a bullet hell when it's the enemy's turn. Instead of killing every enemy you come across, Undertale encourages you to be nice to them. Get to know them, work out their issues, and then spare them. Wait a minute, this isn't a video game. Why do I suddenly have a PhD in monster psychotherapy? Undertale uses these themes to effectively communicate themes of compassion and pacifism, which aren't bad messages at all. Lord knows the world has far too much violence and pointless negativity, am I right, fellas? The characters are easily the best part of the game. Their humor and unique quirks elevate what would already be a pretty cool game. They are the main reason people play Undertale and come out of it with such a passionate experience. As proven by the fanfiction, the characters all represent real struggles, and watching their characters develop as you interact with them is motivating. The game makes you want to spare all the monsters, and it rewards you with a wholesome ending. However, Undertale also actually allows you to play it as if it were a traditional RPG, being able to slaughter your enemies and grind for more levels and health. But if you play it this way, Undertale isn't that fun of a game. In addition to the tedium of it all, it also doesn't make you feel good inside. As opposed to the coziness of the pacifist route, the world darkens. The game interrupts you just to let you know that you've killed everybody in the area. They may be literal monsters, but you're the real monster on the inside. You plunder the empty towns, and everybody's hostile towards you as you go on this genocide. They also feature some of the best late game bosses if you happen to finish everybody off, and they are pretty brutal. So yeah, the game is best experienced in pacifist the first time through, but nobody's forcing you to. Unless you're a YouTuber, I guess. Some parts of the Undertale fanbase like to harass people who don't play the game on Pacifist, because obviously that's the best way to go. I mean, there are hints all over the place. 
And yeah, I cringe a little as well when I watch somebody play through Undertale and ignore everything hinting to them that maybe you should use the mercy button. To be fair, Undertale's biggest struggle is trying to break the conventions of RPGs, and not every player can pick up on subtlety. That's why Undertale's spiritual successor, Deltarune, doesn't punish the player as much for literally doing what video games have been conditioning them to do for the past four decades. But it's insane the amount of crap I see YouTubers take from these fans for remaining in the Matrix and following their gamer instincts. I get that it's done with good intentions to preserve the purity of that first playthrough, but it doesn't come across as well intentioned. Oh no, but they'll miss the point of the game! Um, do you know the point of the game Undertale fans? Because according to what I'm seeing on Reddit, I don't think Toby Fox really got through to you fellas on that one. Ah, Reddit. One thing I love about this site is that it becomes obvious that this generation of human beings doesn't know how protests and activism work. Did I say love? Must have been a typo in the script. Here's a bit of a light trigger warning. We are no longer exclusively talking about funny RPG skeleton game. We are talking about funny RPG skeleton game with a side of territorial conflict. Specifically, the conflicts between Russia and Ukraine, and Israel and Palestine. These are sensitive topics, so please note that I am not taking sides, and I am not here to criticize any parts of the movement itself. There are real people affected by these, and I have friends who are affected on both sides of each war, so I will try to keep it as neutral as possible as well. I am never going to try to sway anybody to one side, alright? Let me make that crystal clear. So, how do these two very serious atrocities relate to this funny little game? Well, as you expect, basically not at all. The Undertale mods just decided to assert themselves. And r slash Undertale aren't the only ones doing it. I feel like a lot of subreddits are overrun by political stuff nowadays, cause what is Reddit if not a bunch of self-righteous karma farmers? It may be an issue in other communities, but the Undertale community just happens to be the most annoying about it. The Undertale subreddit has rules forbidding discussion of politics, but they gave the green light to Russia-Ukraine and Israel-Palestine discourse just because the wars had themes present in Undertale. Uh, I'm sorry, what? That's a really stupid line of reasoning, because Undertale has themes connected to just about everything. I could go from the Undertale Wikipedia page to the one for fetal alcohol syndrome, and I'd imagine there's very little connection between the two. I don't know, maybe we'll have to wait for the rest of Deltarune to come out before we start seeing that. And it doesn't really help that the way the Undertale community expresses their activism is extremely unhelpful. The subreddit first publicly expressed their support for Ukraine during the Russian invasion of Ukraine by making an announcement, then changing the sub icon to display Ukrainian colors. Of course, they took the colors of Ukraine's national flag and then twisted it into some sort of Undertale soul color thing. This is what one of the mods stated. Perhaps not in the slightest appropriate for this place. Oh gee, you think? But there are times when standing idly by is not an option, and even the smallest shows of support and help add up. Wow, that's a nice statement. And it happens to be one that I completely disagree with. Not the standing idly by part of it, but the adding up part. Hot take alert, I don't think you're supporting the cause at all. The same thing with Palestine's watermelon imagery or the black squares for the Black Lives Matter movement. There's nothing wrong with expressing your support with fan art and encouragement, or even having a symbol of your movement. But don't get that confused with tangible support, cause you're still basically standing idly by, you now just have a symbol next to your Twitter profile to show everybody that you're such a good person for supporting a good cause. Fellas, if you feel so strongly about the case, then there are spaces to donate. I've seen some Undertale charity live streams devoted to the cause, and that stuff is totally cool, cause you're integrating the game with the cause in a completely natural way. You could also donate to charities that directly ship blood bags, med kits, and food to families that are affected by the supply chain issues. In fact, the mod in question allegedly participated in humanitarian aid programs for Ukraine. But again, you didn't have to talk about it on the Undertale subreddit. I understand the silence is violence point of view with these protests, and I'm not attacking anybody who chooses to publicly display their opinion on the cause. It's just a problem if that's all they're doing. I understand that regarding these controversial issues, if you're silenced on one platform, then you're going to be even louder on other platforms. But there's no reason for this loudness on the subreddit, because it's not only irrelevant, but there's also no call to action, which is where this entire campaign falls a bit flat. At this stage, action alone is the only thing that really matters, especially after the US cut funds for Palestinian refugees.
The rationale for choosing the sides that they did was because the opposition was committing genocide and wasn't upholding the Undertale soul virtues or something stupid like that. And according to Undertale, that is a bad thing. Undertale taught me that wiping out an ethnic group is a bad thing. Now whether it's appropriate is a whole different story. But the only thing relating it to the Undertale community at all is the word genocide. So maybe at this point, you fellas might be thinking that I want to censor the thoughts and feelings of people affected by these conflicts. And I really don't. Again, I just think that people are getting riled up in the wrong place and for the wrong reasons. And also, if you want to talk about censorship, then look at the mods. Before Russia-Ukraine stuff started happening, this subreddit had a policy against stuff not related to Undertale. But now they're only allowing talk about these two issues. A comment on this thread points out that there are actually other conflicts going on that would fit the definition of a genocide better than the Israel-Palestine conflict. Oh, but we're not allowed to talk about stuff like the Syrian civil war, are we? Because it's not as much of a hot topic, and we're also not allowed to discuss politics other than what this one mod decided for everybody. You all heard me right, in both the Russia-Ukraine case and the Israel-Palestine case, it is the same guy spouting all this nonsense. And apparently, none of the other mods cared enough to stop him. Not surprising, I've never had a positive experience with the Reddit mod. Make your rules consistent, guys. Either all of it's okay, or none of it is okay. Obviously, by the way, don't harass any of the mods. Also, Undertale's main goal isn't anti-genocide, because no form of media has to make that point the main message. I would be very concerned with the world if somebody was trying to tell their audience that genocide is bad. So this argument about genocide doesn't really make sense, and isn't very helpful in the context of politics or Undertale. In all of Undertale's marketing material, its gameplay, and its story, it's all about love and compassion and the ability to form an agreement between two different parties. Undertale connected with me and so many others so much because its message of compassion is one that I truly believe in. So, if the Undertale subreddit is going to push an agenda on us at all, I think it should be one in support of a ceasefire. Is it so hard or naive to say that? I would like to think not. Clearly, this violent dispute hasn't been settled in the past hundred years by picking sides. And not to mention, these posts basically formed cracks within the community. I think they actually managed to do more harm than good. The mod states that discussion of the conflict was quarantined to that thread and that thread alone. But that is completely false. The discussion is far too big to just be tied to this one post. Maybe mods can control the discussions happening over in r slash Undertale, but they couldn't do anything about subreddits like r slash Deltarune v2 or r slash Justin Subs, where hundreds of people were able to express their distaste of the discourse without being stampeded by toxic fans. And after they gave the green light to any pro-Palestine posts, that was all anybody could talk about for a while. And if the mods didn't want this toxicity on their subreddit, then it's literally as simple as sticking to the rules and not posting about it. From what I could tell, the Israel-Palestine conflict changed the rules of the entire sub. See what I mean about corrupt Reddit mods? The mods can't say that they didn't expect any of this. You're publicly choosing a side for a very controversial issue, and drawing the attention of people arguing just to argue, and isolating the people who just wanted to talk about Undertale. There are plenty of other subreddits for discussing the same kind of stuff, but trying to twist a massive media story to fit with loosely related video game themes isn't a very natural or healthy way of talking about it. In fact, it just seems more like you're trying to farm karma. I'm not accusing the mods of manipulating the fanbase for internet points, partially because I don't think it worked, but r slash Undertale is a subreddit for Undertale fans, not fans of Ukraine and Palestine. If any of the moderators of r slash Undertale are listening, please don't try to pull off this kind of stuff a third time. The fanbase doesn't want it, and the video game doesn't want it. There is a time and a place to talk about this kind of stuff, and this ain't it. If you want to support your family and friends on either side of this war, then donate to any emergency relief funds. Make sure to use something like Charity Watch or Charity Navigator to ensure that this money is actually going to humanitarian aid. Stop yapping on Reddit and help give the civilians some food and medical supplies. Hopefully this video didn't get too dark or controversial. Actually, I take that back. I hope this video is controversial. I would like to hear some other people's opinions on this. But for me, I'll just leave this subreddit until r slash Undertale decides to actually focus on Undertale again. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.